Hi, I'm Michael Newrock and welcome to my Forex market analysis for September 12, 2017. We'll get straight into the charts. Uh, currently on gold, four hour, four out of six high time frames are pointing down. Uh, so at the moment we've had, we've just had a, uh, a new trend trade. It's moved uh, about a thousand pips, uh, which is $10 in the, uh, in the price of gold. Uh, but you might want to uh, look at defending yourself as far as uh, with your stops and, and locking in some profits or at least moving to break even because on the daily chart you can see it's still in full bloom of uh, of uh, this upward move and this last three days may be nothing uh, more than a correction and we're currently on the third day now so just be aware of that uh, the market may be looking at a bit of a correction and then a move to retest this high uh, so if you do get a correction but it doesn't get much of a correction and swings back down and the high time frames are pointing down then it may continue for some distance here to the downside so just uh, observe the market at the time Okay, Euro. Euro is in the bi-directional market now. It's been going up for quite some time and uh, I've been uh, upbeat and bullish about uh, the uh, Euro. It's been moving pretty much upward uh, since April, apart from say this little consolidation patch here, but overall upward, very strong. And uh, like the uh, like gold, we may be we may be seeing the beginning of uh, of a move down, but we may be seeing the um, well, just nothing more than a small correction. So this high here uh, was higher than this high here. So if you do get uh, well, the first sign of it would be to see the counter uh, MACD under the zero line, um, which suggests that the price may be starting to to move counter to this uh, trend trade. Um, if you are in this, you might want to tighten your stops uh, dramatically. Um, if it does curl back up or you get it on a shorter time frame, it might be a possible uh, winner as a long. So here we are on the pound, a four hour, and uh, I've been talking about the pound for some time. It was uh, going slower uh, upward compared to the euro, but uh, I was suggesting that there might be some flip and we'll talk about that in a second. And it looks like there has been five out of six higher time frames are, are now pointing up. So this trend trade um, would have would have done well, probably been taken out here. Uh, depends on how you would have gone here on this swing. Again, you may have been taken out uh, and this one here would have been the nicest one of all uh, where, uh, you know, it never really went against you. And that's actually the trade that... Um, that I took recently last week. Uh, these lines here are the uh, part of the new uh, system that we will be releasing sometime this week as quickly as possible. It's got some cool new features, uh, including the display of the targets. You can change the way that uh, the lines are displayed uh, as far as their style and color. And uh, you know, it just helps you identify a little bit easier where those targets should be placed or how they look at uh, on the screen when you know you um, you complete your targets and you can adjust them. So we've had two lock and uh, profits uh, at this stage in this particular trade. It's been drifting a little bit down, but it, it's still ripe for a swing upward. And if we do, then my third target uh, very well may be hit, and then we'll uh, trail by um, by the trailing methodologies that I have in place. So. Uh, Euro pound. Euro pound has now flipped to the downside. Four out of six uh, of the high time frames are pointing down. You know, it was going up for quite some time, and um, but you know, at this stage it has moved already. So if you did take that uh, short, then congratulations that trend trade or either of those swing trades. Uh, be aware that it is still uh, has been still moving up for considerable time since. Um, May of this year. So this may be nothing more than a small correction uh, or a correction. And uh, by the look of the attack of this, uh, the angle of this uh, moving average, it looks like unless we get in a really strong or decent swing downward, uh, it's, it's, it's not looking as, as strong to the downside. Um, again, unless we have a further strong move downward. So just watch this, um, this pair and, and, you know, it may flip back up to the upside. Uh, 
if the euro strengthens, this will, of course, will change in the first instance to bidirectional market. And then from there, you might even catch a conservative upward uh, trend trade. And uh, it might be a good opportunity because, you know, the whole the whole gameplay will be to retest this uh, this high here. OK, pound Swiss is the uh, reverse correlation of the euro pound, and it's done the exact opposite. So it's started going uh, upward. Five out of six higher time frames are now up and uh, you know, it's uh, being moved along with the strength of the pound itself. Um, so you can see here on the daily, this is interesting. It's entered a new daily upward trend trade. So, you know, when you look at it on this chart, uh, you can see here the gameplay. In this case, maybe this high here, which is uh, 128.50 thereabouts. So, you know, there's a couple of hundred pips there. Uh, so we'll just move it back to the four hour. If you haven't tried the dailies, then you can give the dailies a go. Uh, just uh, if you do do that, consider changing the high time frames to daily, weekly, monthly, uh, which you can do in your settings, uh, both on your EA and your indicator, of course. Okay, Aussie. Uh, Aussie has just moved to the downside. It reached a high far surpassed my expectations, but it's not totally unnatural after this consolidation here to get a push upwards and overreach the um, the uh, resistance levels. So, you know, we may get a move down, but at this stage it's retracing on itself. Uh, I took this trade earlier as a bit of a practice trade uh, for testing development purposes, but um, I, I'm, I'm not too confident on it because, you know, it is has been moving for upward for some time. So, you know, again, it could be like some of the other pairs are retesting of this high. If we just uh, change over to the daily, um, you can see here you know, this high again past this high and it's only been two days of a downward move and that includes the current day. So that would be my concern um, whether it uh, flips to the upside. Okay, so New Zealand. New Zealand has been a lot more under pressure than the Aussie. And uh, this one, if you're looking at shorting up here, may be a better opportunity than that, than the Aussie because the Aussie has been just overall a lot more stronger. You can say, see that quite clearly by the Aussie Kiwi uh, pair. And if you look at it on the daily, you can see here it's been going pretty much nothing but up. Uh, so, you know, the one to short really at, at still in my mind is the um, the kiwi it's more the one under pressure okay dollar cad uh dollar cad has been under a lot of pressure it's been moving downward four out of six high time frames are pointing down we've got on the daily here actually let's just move to the weekly because this pair has just moved so far down now this was the level that we were looking at uh a, a little recently and it it it, it actually if you Draw the line here. That's pretty interesting here because we did get a bit of a support up here and then it fell back down, uh, crashed through that level and now sitting on this low pivot. So the only thing is there's one more pivot low to go, which is down around here, uh, 121.15 thereabouts. So moving back on the four hour and this trade is really under a lot of pressure um, but if there's a move to the um, well if there's a correction then a swing back down then obviously uh, it's a one to short although it has moved so far down already so I don't recommend it uh, it's now one of those like a case of musical chairs you might be the one that misses out uh, all these other ones have done really well um, but um, yeah you don't want to play musical chairs with the market now, if it starts moving up, moving up strongly, changes the bi-directional, it might be one to, to uh, reassess uh, for a long. Now, dollar Swiss, dollar Swiss is interesting. It's got a nice uh, trend trade. I like this one um, in terms of the, the look of the trend trade. Nice parabolic curve here and uh, nice and strong. Not too, um, not too close to the crossover and not too far. So this trade... Uh, alert just happened uh, before or in the, on the last bar. So if you want to take the trade manually, you have your go long command. Um, but in this new update, we've also uh, 
added a couple of enhancements and I'll just bring it up now. Um, now there's a section here, manual commands. Just before I, I do that, you can see here, you can change the, uh, the, the target levels to any color and the different styles. So you can have them all different uh, and you can uh, decide to whether you want to display them or not. But uh, back to the manual commands, this is pretty cool. You can place the instructions. This true false does nothing other than uh, display it on the chart. So I'll just bring it up. And that's just uh, for your own purposes. If you uh, want to take a trade and you can't recall the syntax, so it's right here. So what I want to do is uh, take a pending trade. Uh, so I don't want to get in on the market. I want to get in on the market. This is hypothetically. If it breaks through this level and buy stops, that, that would be called a buy stop trade, uh, as opposed to just an, a uh, market execution, work really well with um, trend trading uh, and with the trend profiteer system, as does the sell stop for short trade. So in this case, let's say we want to enter the market, but not until it breaks fairly decently above this, um, this little high. So we want to go say 95.80. So all I need to do is use the text command. Just click on the screen anywhere. And the command for a pending trade is, uh, for a, a buy pending trade is go long at, and then on the next line, the price. So in this case, 0 0.95, was it 75? No, 80. Click OK. And there you go. Uh, pending trade. This trade is not live, um, but it will be live the moment the price hits uh, with the, the spread, of course. So it'll just be just a up just below that, just the way that uh, the broker system works. But anyway, the but the thing is, you've got a manual trade placed in there based on your on your settings for the trend profiteer system, and it will manage it automatically from um, from that point on. But the key thing is that um, you're putting in a pending trade that will only be executed as a live trade uh, if and when it um, hits this line. So that's pretty cool. Really excited about that. Two big updates uh, coming out in this uh, update. So here's another example where you could take a pending long trade. So a really nice strong uh, buy trend trade. It is bi-directional in nature, but it has gone down uh, a long way over time. So if we look at the daily, we can see a, a better picture. You know, it has been under a lot of pressure. There's no no doubt about that at all. And this trend trade just totally collapsed on itself as one of those disaster stories, but that happens. Um, and if you've been watching the videos for a while, you can see that on, on my charts that uh, there's more success stories than not. Um, you know, losses are just part of part of trading. So um, four hour, oh, looks like it's just changed to four out of six. That would have been because the, the uh, histogram just changed from red to green because it's dynamic. Uh, we're tracking this dynamically. So again, um, you could use a uh, pending buy stop to get in on the trade if you want to, you know, see price over a certain point. Uh, okay, so Euro Yen. Euro Yen has been uh, pretty strong particularly because of the euro itself. Five out of six higher time frames are pointing up and uh, it's been pretty strong for a while. So if you're in this trade or have been in, in this trade, then uh, congratulations. Um, now, this is what I talk about. See the swing that occurred over here. Now, this is based on my settings being just so I can catch all the uh, arrows. And again, it's more for, a, um, for the purposes of just being able to see those trades. But um, this is the game of musical chairs. When you take a trade so high on the charts and so far away from the uh, from the crossover, then you know it's a it's a, it's it's more of a gamble than a than a good trade. Uh, so euro yen looking upwards currently. Pound yen also been driving up uh, for uh, some time with the strength of the pound. So, you know, at this stage, wait for a correction. If you're already in this trade, then like this one was a 
really nice one. It just never went against you. So give yourself a pat on the back if you got that one. Uh, Aussie yen, uh, it also has been going up, uh, upward, but it's been very, very choppy. So not my pick out of them. Kiwi yen, um, Kiwi's been under pressure a lot. So I'm not crazy about, uh, about this particular trade either but currently it's in an upward move uh, so you know if there's a, a drift down and then a big swing up and a strength in the kiwi then you know it might be a a, a decent trade but um, in my mind the um, the uh, euro the pound the well the dollar yen would be probably my pick out of them uh, it, because it, it's 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 ripe for a move up and uh, the the look of these trades they're looking a lot less messy a lot cleaner in other words so yeah, that would probably be where i'd be looking at as far as the uh, yen crosses go okay euro aussie it's bi-directional it's been pretty horrible um it, we did catch some really nice trades uh one or two weeks ago but uh, since then it's been going through this real consolidation euro has been going strong but so is the aussie and that's the problem with this pair right now you want to see one of them strong and one of them weak uh, if you've got both of them strong or both of them weak, it's much harder to, to determine because you're you're de trying to determine which is the stronger of the two of two strong um, currencies or which is the weaker of the two on two weak currencies. So right now, uh, best to wait to see how things go with those two pairs. Uh, pound Aussie, a little bit of a different story, right? Um, it's had a really nice trend trade here that again, never went against... Uh, against the position and five out of six higher time frames are pointing up strong pound um, and in this case quite a bit stronger than uh, than the aussie so maybe look for a correction and uh, and, a, and a swing up but you know of course always reassess the market based on the trend profiteer system and that'll help guide you okay euro kiwi uh been moving up for quite some time but then we've had this consolidation uh so uh, a little bit of a, a tricky one just like the euro aussie actually and the euro kiwi just like the euro aussie is much more definite in nature and, and that's because we've had that correction uh to the downside on the euro while the pound has remained stronger uh remember the pound swiss has been going uh, has, has flipped to the upside while the euro pound has flipped to the downside so you know, it's good because we were we've been able to see continuity now over the last uh, over two weeks since I've been doing these um, these um, more regular um, market analysis uh, videos. So um, I hope this is uh, this has helped you. So uh, the new update will be out really shortly. I'm really excited to bring it out. Uh, we've obviously got to get everything in place. From, including changes to the manual. Uh, we've got an autoresponder coming out with the software this time, so it should be a real breeze to, to, uh, uh, to uh, install, and uh, you know the updates to the system are, are definitely worthwhile. So until next time, good trading, live well, and I'll see you soon.